Have you heard Jesus is coming back for his bride? And the spirit and the bride say, come. Read Revelation 22, 17. And who's the bride? Read Ephesians 5, 27. Visit the website now. And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Mail correspondence to And the spirit and the bride say, come. P.O. Box 210, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. Or send an email to info at And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Praise God, praise God, praise God, and welcome once again to our broadcast. We thank the Lord for this opportunity, and we thank you for tuning in and being with us today on our broadcast. We praise the Lord for this opportunity, and we thank you for taking the time to view our broadcast. I'm your broadcast announcer, Elder David Morris, and our broadcast here, and the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. We're so glad to be here. We're excited to let you know that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. Not a fiance, not a girlfriend, and not a social partner, but he's on his way back for his bride. Now, we always like to begin our broadcast with a prayer. Ask the Lord to bless. Someone might be healed, saved, and delivered. Would you bow your heads with us? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come before your people. We pray that you will bless that someone who will be healed, saved, and delivered through your word. Claim it done in the name of Jesus. Amen and thank you, Jesus. Well, we're back once again. My friend, believe it or not, Jesus is on his way back, and he's looking for his bride. Now, in case someone has never heard this, let me read something to you in the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter and the 7th verse. It said, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. It's right here in the Bible, my friend. We're not making this up. Well, our announcement today is entitled, The Bride of Christ, Just Let Me Pass. The Bride of Christ, Just Let Me Pass. That is her proclamation. That is her declaration. And that is her decree. One statement, Just Let Me Pass pass. While passing through the wilderness on their way to the promised land, the children of Israel often encountered many hostile environments. One such encounter took place in the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter, the 21st verse, and the 27th verse. When you get your Bible and turn to Numbers 21, 21st verse, and 22nd verse. And it reads, And Israel sent messengers unto Shaham, king of the Amorites, saying, in the 22nd verse, Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into the field, or into the vineyard. We will not drink of the waters of your well, but we will go along by the king's highway until we be par, until we be past thy borders. That is her proclamation. Just let me pass. As they were traveling through the wilderness, they came upon the, the king of the Amorites. And they wanted to pass through his country. And they sent a declaration to him saying, let me pass. Now, my friend, that was a bold statement indeed. Straight to the point. No double talk. No beating around the bush. Actually, what it does is sets the stage for the future Bride of Christ. It sets the stage for the future Bride of Christ. 
Now let's take a look just for a minute and see what happened here in this 21st verse. First of all, they did not look for a backdoor entrance. They did not slip in. They came in with the faith, the belief that the Lord was going to take them through. They knew who they served. That's the first thing. They did not look for a backdoor entrance. Now, if we go to the 22nd verse, Next thing we see is they did not want anything from the Amorites. Nothing that the Amorites had that the children of Israel wanted. All they wanted, just let me pass. Go to First John, the second chapter and the 15th verse. First John, second chapter and the 15th verse. Always bring your Bible to our broadcast so you can follow us in the word of God. The children of Israel, the future bride of Christ was on the march. They were marching through the land of the Amorites. And all they had to say was just let me pass. They didn't want nothing from the world, my friend. Nothing that they had in the Amorite country. The children of Israel wanted. Listen at what it said. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the 16th verse says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. My friend, the Amorites didn't have nothing to offer but the world. And all the children of Israel had to say, well, let me pass. Oh, what a testimony. Let me pass. You just heard the word of God. And then the 22nd verse goes on to say, they didn't even want any citizenship papers because they were not going to be there that long. They didn't need any citizenship papers. They weren't going to be there that long. They were just passing through, my friend. And that's what we're doing right now. We're just passing through on our way to the New Jerusalem. The marriage supper of the Lamb. All we have to say to the world is let me pass. That's our declaration. That's our proclamation. Just let, glory, let me pass. They didn't need any sister of paper. They weren't hanging around that long. The old saints had a saying that they used to testify to the younger saints. And it was something like this. If you pitch a tent in the world, sooner or later, you can expect a visitor. If you pitch your tent in the world, sooner or later, you can expect a visitor. And it won't be a long lost friend, my friend. No, it won't. Brother Joe May, back in the early 70s, wrote a song. He wrote a song that was entitled, Don't Let the Devil Ride. Because if you let him ride, he's going to want to drive. Don't let him ride. The children of Israel said, no, we don't want anything that you have. Just let us pass. 
It's right here in the Bible, my friend. And then look what they said about the field in verse 22. Let me pass through thy land. We will not turn into your fields. Turn into your fields? Was the children of Israel looking for something to eat? No, my friend. Because the scripture tells us in Matthew, the 13th chapter and the 38th verse, just what that field is all about. Turn your Bible to Matthew. 13th chapter and the 38th verse. It'll tell you what the field. They stayed away from the field. Listen at me now. We're on our way. But they laid the blueprint down on how the children of Israel was able to pass through the land of the Amorites. They stayed away from the field. Listen what Matthew 38. Listen what Matthew the 13th chapter and the 38th verse reads. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tare are the children of the wicked one. The field is the world, my friend. We cannot turn into the world and expect to pass through the land of the Amorites. Oh no, they did not turn. They stayed the course. Glory. Hallelujah. They stayed the course. They did not turn into the world. And verse 22 goes on to say, they didn't even want to drink from the Amorite's well. Didn't even want to drink. They didn't have to drink from the Amorite's well. Go to St. John, the fourth chapter and the 14th verse. St. John, the fourth chapter and the 14th verse. Listen at what it says. But whoso never drinketh of the water that I shall give him. This is Jesus talking right here. Shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal, everlasting life. Springing up to, to everlasting life, my friend. They didn't have to drink from the well of the world. Glory. Watch it now. They didn't have to because they had an everlasting spring that came from heaven that they were drinking from. You remember what happened in the wilderness? When they were thirsty, they got water from a rock. We don't have to drink from the world. Then it goes on to say that the pothole was not a problem. They say, I'm going to go up toward the king's highway. But you don't have to worry about us tearing up your road, your highway, because we're going up the king of king's highway. You heard of that? Go to Revelation. Hallelujah. 21. And 21. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every seven gate was one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. They were walking on the king highway. They didn't have to damage the Amorites highway because they were walking on the king's highway. That's where we are walking today. It's hard to understand what the world is offering if we don't stay on the king's 
highway. Just look at here. And not only that, it tops it off in the 22nd verse. It says, until we pass thy borders. We're not going to be here today and gone tomorrow. But we're going to stay the course until we make it. And we're not going to turn around. Go to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter and the second verse. Isaiah 43. And two, listen to what it said. When thou passest through the water, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle under thee. That was the Lord speaking. When thy path is through, my friend, we have to go through. On the other side is the victory. We have to go through. And the children of Israel had a made up mind. They were going all the way. All they wanted, just let me pass. The world does not understand, and they find this hard to believe, that you can forsake the world. The Bible says, be ye in the world, but not of the world. We live in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. The world cannot believe this. They have a problem with it. Just like the king of the Amorites, he couldn't believe that all they wanted to do would just pass. He believed they had some secret that they wanted to spring on him. Agenda. Mm -hmm. But all they wanted was just to pass. Thank God we got a witness. The world don't have to believe it. We got a witness that have already passed through the land of the Amorites. Not only did he pass through the land of the Amorites, but he passed through the world itself. Oh, the devil didn't want him to pass through. But he passed through anyway. Because he loved his father more than he loved himself. Yes, my friend, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the bridegroom, Christ himself, phase one that was more destructive more deadlier than the king of the Amorites. He faced principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world who had only one agenda, one goal, and that was to not let him pass. That was the only goal. Don't let Jesus pass. And he faced it. Yes, he did. And if you ever want it, hallelujah, to see someone who had every reason to say, just let me pass, then look at Jesus. You see, the children of Israel could have chose another route. 
They could have went in another direction and avoided the king of the Amorites entirely. And it would not have affected the world. It would only have been an inconvenience to them. But it was not so for Jesus Christ. Not so. His sacrifice would mean a pass for the whole world. He had no other direction, my friend. He had to go straight through. He had to pass. Go to Matthew, the 26th chapter and the 39th verse. Matthew 26 and the 39th verse. Listen at what it said. Listen what it cost him, my friend. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. Look what it cost him. Now, I have read in the scripture where Jesus took the disciples up on the mountain of transfiguration and was transformed in front of their very eyes. Then a voice spoke, said, this is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. And the scriptures say, the disciples fell on their face. They fell on their face when they heard that voice. Now I have read where they fell on their face, but I had never really read and understood that Jesus fell upon his face until I read this 39th verse. Then I understood. Listen at it again. And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. When I read the 38th verse, it explained it all. Every bit explained what had happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. The 38th verse said, Then said he unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Listen to this. Even unto death, tarry ye here and watch with me. Now notice my friend. Jesus said that his soul was sorrowful, not afraid. You see, sometimes we look at it in the calm. Jesus didn't say he was afraid. Jesus said he was sorrowful. There is a big difference between the word sorrowful and afraid. Jesus knew he had to pass. There was no way around it. He knew that he had to die even before he came here. It was no surprise to Jesus. Go to Matthew 16 and 21. Matthew 16 and 21. Listen to this. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Woo! Glory. He knew Jesus was afraid. He knew he was going to die. He didn't say he was afraid. He said, I'm sorrowful. 
Something else is going on here, my friend. He's passing through. Something is going on. We're looking at it in the carnal. We need to look at it in the spiritual. He knew that dying on the cross is an experience and would be an experience for anyone. He felt the moment, my friend, because he said, by my strife, ye are healed. He felt every nail. He felt the thorn. Glory. Hallelujah. Think about it. Pressing in his head. He felt the spear in his side. He said, by my strife, ye are healed. He felt all of that. He felt the moment. But look what happened here. Something was deeper than just the suffering. Jesus knew. Hear this right here. Jesus knew that the very second he took on the sins of the world, he would be separated from his father. Let that soak in, glory. He knew that the very second that he took on our sins, it would separate him from his father. And that, my friend, had never happened. He had never experienced being separated from his father. And it was almost unbearable to him. He was sorrowful. He wasn't afraid of the cross. He knew what he was up against. But being separated from the father. My Lord, almost was unbearable for him. It had never happened. And that lets me know one thing right there. I don't ever want to be again separated from the Father. I don't ever want to go outside and look up and not feel The moving of his spirit. I don't ever want to have to wonder again. Whether I'm separated from the father. And that's me, a mere mortal. What about Jesus Christ? My friend, that's why he fell on his face. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When they beat him, he didn't say a mumbling word. When they pierced him in the side, he didn't say a mumbling word. When they took a cat of nine tail, a leather strap that's wrapped and entangled with wire and sometimes sea shade and beat him till he did hardly look like a man. He didn't say a word. But when it come time to be separated from his father, he spoke up. Yes, he did. He spoke up. And listen what he said. Listen what he said. Matthew 26 and 39. Listen what he said. Hallelujah. Just listen what he said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I think about it, it's beyond my capability. It's beyond my capability, my friend. I cannot put it in perspective. 
what he went through after being on the right hand side of his father and then being separated, separated from him. I, I can't I can't comprehend that. Look at look what he said. Oh my father, if it be possible. I don't want to be separated from you if it be possible. Let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, thank you, Jesus. Not as I will, but as thy will. Nevertheless, if that's what it takes for me to pass through the world, let me pass. Your will be done. Your will be done. I don't want to be separated from you. It's unbearable, but nevertheless, your will be done. Just let me pass. My friend, think about it. Think about it. The children of Israel gave up the world just to pass. How about us? How about us? How about us? Glory to God. Separation from the Father is the ultimate. Nothing in this world compares to being separated from our Father. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. We have a Redeemer. That we never have to be separated from the Lord, the Creator, ever again. My friend, all it takes is just to receive Jesus. If you're there now, you might be feeling separated if you're there. Would you pray with me just for a minute? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you allowed us through your son to mend the gap And do away with the separation by saving our soul, giving our life to your son, Jesus. Through him, we will pass through the land of the Amorites, through this world, and be with you one day. Will you save our soul? We repent. right now. We believe that you have raised your son Jesus from the dead and we confess with our mouth. And we believe it right now in Jesus' name. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen and thank you, Jesus. Well, my friend, you ready to pass through this world you got what you need. You got Jesus. And that's all that it will ever take. Believe me. He's the one through him. Back to the Father, the bride of Christ, 
just let me pass. Thank you for tuning in and being with us. Continue to follow us. Pray for us as we go through announcing that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. Check us out. Go to our website in the spirit of the bride say come dot org. Go to our contact page. You find all of our links there. Click on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. And if you happen to go to Facebook, you will find us there. And also on YouTube, if you go there, click on that subscribe button and the notification bell. We're praying that it will be a blessing to you and it would help us to continue to bring these broadcasts. We are on every Sunday at 11 o'clock on our premiere. Follow us and then share the video with someone that they may be blessed. We be ever grateful to the Lord and we thank you for this opportunity. And now keep the faith, my friend. Keep the faith. The best is yet to come because we're on our way to the new Jerusalem and we live in the blessed hope that we will meet you then. Let us go to the new Jerusalem Oh the spirit and the bride say come We will all sing a brand new song Let us go to the new Jerusalem Let us go Oh, the Lord.